And flu season, stuffy nose, go to Vic Sinex Nasal Spray, works up to 12 hours. Use only as directed. When I was a little kid, I, there was like Vicks, and I put my finger in a little jar. It used to come in a jar, and I ate Vicks, a, a bunch of it. That's a story in my family. It's a legendary story of Did me. Did you get sick? Uh, I don't remember. Uh, the, the word was it was not a good night for me, uh, <laughs> but I ate it as a kid. Do not eat Vicks Sinex My nasal grandfather spray. used to chase us around if we had a sniffle and put Vicks <laughs> all over us, but... We, we didn't get sick. And look where you are today. Yeah, it worked out. Um, uh, Joy and I talk about this a lot. We talk about it in the NBA a lot. And I think it's it's something, one of the things I really like is, um, I, I like a lot of the analytics in sports. I like how, like, sports change. You know, one of my knocks on baseball is it looks the same as it did 100 years ago. I want more stuff. I like new stuff. I, I like risks. And the NFL, I mean, first of all, got all these quarterbacks coming in now. And it's so much fun to watch. But the other thing is, it used to be people didn't make trades in the NFL. Jimmy Johnson was the first guy to go out and say, I'm going to get, you can have Herschel Walker, I want eight players. People didn't do that in the NFL. Now we have trades. Well, now it's crazy. Now what you're doing, now you're seeing stuff you didn't see five years ago, mid-season trades. Aggressive wins in sports. Think about the teams this year that made mid-season moves, they're all paying off. Michael Bennett of the Cowboys, oh, wait, he's good. Jadavian Clowney last night. Minka Fitzpatrick of the Steelers. Marcus Peters of the Baltimore, he solved their big dilemma. Jalen Ramsey of the Rams, no question their defense now carries the team. Emmanuel Sanders, wide receiver San Francisco, walked in, two practices in, made an impact. Mohamed Sanu is already after Edelman, the number two target for New England, and Laramie Tunsil saved Deshaun Watson's bacon, uh, left tackle. These were aggressive midseason trades. For the record, many of them panned. Laramie Tunsil move, panned. Uh, uh, um, Minka Fitzpatrick, panned. I mean, you're going to tell me that Jadavian Clowney wasn't worth that third-round pick Seattle gave up? Aggressive wins. And here's why it's important. Is that as good as Pete Carroll is, Pete Carroll has whiffed on a lot of t first round draft picks. That running back Penny, they don't want him near the field. That was a couple years ago, running back, first round, the Penny kid from San Diego State, they don't want him near the field. Their running back's a seventh round guy they love. Uh, Minka Fitzpatrick got ripped. But when you get these veteran coaches who don't sit and watch college football, but they sit and watch NFL film all day, Bill Belichick has whiffed on a million picks. But how often has Bill Belichick whiffed when you get him a guy already in the league that he's watched and played against, he doesn't whiff much. Pete Carroll seen Jadavian Clowney. He, you also get the expertise of a Belichick or a Pete Carroll or a Mike Tomlin who can take Minka Fitzpatrick. They scout him. They watch him in the league. They move him into their system. These draft picks, I mean, I, I, I remember covering Warren Sapp in Tampa when I worked in Tampa. Sapp was great. He was lost for about 15 games. He was just lost. Now, he became a Hall of Fame level player. But if I can get a clowny, uh, Muhammad Sanu, these guys know the playbook. They figure it out quickly. You'll put them in. Emmanuel Sanders is in San Francisco for an hour. It's like, boom. They, they got wide receiver, rookie wide receivers they've had for a year now. They still can't catch and get the playbook down. So, uh, I mean, Muhammad Sanu walks into New England and Brady trusts him first game. First game he throws to him. Second game he's a go-to target. They draft the receiver, Nikhil Harry, from Arizona State. They still don't play him. Brady doesn't trust him. So aggressive wins, midseason trades, get a veteran, been in the league. And all. here's the other thing that Pittsburgh did by adding Minka Fitzpatrick is that, and I think Pete Carroll figured this out, adding Jadavian Clowney and Josh Gordon. It adds juice to your locker room. I mean, Seattle's in a dogfight with San Francisco. But when you bring Josh Gordon in, players know Josh can play. Players know Jadavian can play. Those guys fill out the uniform. It adds juice to the locker room. Guys are like, oh, oh, we're all in. When the Steelers added Minka Fitzpatrick, what Mike Tomlin was saying is, oh, I don't care if Big Ben's out. We're going to go win this division. We're going to go win this division. By the way, it adds juice. Pittsburgh has played better since Minka arrived, not just because of Minka, but because of the energy and the, and the, and the symbolism of adding a star player. We're, we're, not, we're not calling the season off. Football's hard, man. Eight, week six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You can lose guys in locker rooms. Not physically. You lose them emotionally. And I'm looking at all these. Laramie Tunsil move got ripped. Minka move got ripped. I mean, Houston's a different team.
Seattle's defense last night was was the more dominant defense at times. So aggressive wins in sports. Make in season trades. Joy of the news. No, 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 no. Turn on the news. This is the Herdline News. Let me know, Zach Prescott is still waiting for a long-term contract extension from the Cowboys. He's played well this year despite the team's 5-4 and four record. And Stephen Jones insists that Dak's value doesn't fluctuate on a week-to-week basis. Full body of work, and he's doing a great job. I mean, obviously, uh, he played one of his better games that he's ever played. And, you know, we're never going to talk about the negotiation. Everybody knows what uh, Jerry, myself, the organization thinks about Dak and our goal is to ultimately get this thing done. To Dak's credit, he's he's pretty much hushed the contract conversation throughout the season. I think yeah. if this was anybody else, we would be talking about it every single day. He doesn't let us. He's right. not, he doesn't let us. And, and and that's been pleasant because obviously, I mean, talking about people's money is, yeah, it, is a bit obnoxious. It's the worst. But it is part of sports and, and it matters because what they end up giving Dak or what, say, they end up giving Patrick Mahomes will affect the future of the franchise because that is what it's all coming down to in a salary right. cap league. So... It, this is uh, uh, the situation is a bit strange, though, to me. Like, it, it, if it's coming down to a couple million dollars, do you not just get it done? I think you get it done. I mean, I think Jerry's put his arm around him more than once and said, "You're a cowboy for life. We'll get it done." And now you're in the season. You don't want to talk about it. And I and again, I think a lot of this credit goes to Dak. Dak's yeah. just not giving us an opportunity. I mean, seriously, I think somebody asked about week two, and he's like. Yeah, we got a yeah, big game coming up. Yeah, we're focusing on the game. So, again, he's a grown-up at this point. If you're if you're doubting whether Dak should be paid at this point, I, there's nothing I can do. I can't – I can't. I mean, listen, you all fall in love with Lamar Jackson after 15 games. Dak's been winning this – he's been winning 11 games now for four years. Like, I don't understand if it's if it's the Cowboys because he plays for the Cowboys. I, I don't, don't know if it's Ezekiel Elliott. You know what? He's a, There's a lot about Dak that he's a grinder, and we, we love spectacular – we don't, we don't, appre- by the way, Brady's winning Super Bowls. Well, he's a system guy. Aaron Rodgers has won. He's yeah. amazing. A lot of Dak's strengths are hidden, work ethic, leadership, grinder, head down, toughness. That stuff, Mahomes is throwing the ball down the field, not looking. But it just, to me, it comes down to are you winning or are you losing? And after, yeah, I mean, you, bad quarterbacks go on winning streaks, but this after is four, not a winning streak. Yeah, though. it's four years of it. Like it's, it's like when does that start to matter whether yeah. you're winning games or not? So Lamar Jackson obviously has played better than anyone thought he would this year, and his coach John Harbaugh has definitely noticed, along with the rest of us. And during his big win over the Bengals on Sunday, Harbaugh told his quarterback, you changed the game, man. You know how many little kids in this country are going to be wearing number eight playing quarterback for the next 20 years? And Lamar responded, I can't wait to see it when I get older, but right now I got to get to the Super Bowl. <laughs> it's a really nice exchange. Uh, hopefully we can eventually get the video later. But Again. he also says Harbaugh is kind of leaning over and he's like, you know, talking about the team. And he's like, you know, that's why they love you. And Lamar goes, I love you too, coach. <laughs> it's like this really like sweet <laughs> interaction. But I do think I do want to give Harbaugh a lot of credit because we don't talk about him a lot. Ever. Re- yes, like really ever. And he's... In the top five coaches in this league. And, By the way, and, and no matter what goes on with the Ravens, they're always competitive. They're always a functional organization. By the way, he's Pete Carroll. He's got a Super Bowl. Uh, both of them have gone to Foxborough and won. Right. I mean, it's like, and both are an expert. And he was a special teams guru. Pete, a defensive guy. If you look at off a of buy, I think he's got a better winning percentage than Pete. The difference is Pete has a brand. Pete Carroll, USC, Pete Carroll, you know, Pete Carroll's got, even my wife last night, she's like, boy, he really looks good for his day. Pete's a little bit of a rock star where Harbaugh's the lesser known of the Harbaugh brothers. Yeah, yes, yes. (laughs) And I think it's a little bit of the Ravens brand, too. Like, the Ravens brand is just always about what's on the field and, you know, Ray Lewis, and it's just like, it's still a very exciting team and, like, a very discussable team, but we don't really ever talk about the coach. And they're in the division with the biggest mess in the league, generally Cleveland, and, and the second biggest brand of the Cowboys, Pittsburgh. Right. They, get, they get lost a little bit in that. Yeah, and I do think what ends up happening with Lamar Jackson will be a, a big credit to Harbaugh's legacy there. Oh, because absolutely. With all the questions that they had about Lamar Jackson coming into the league and now the way he's playing now and the success that he's having. And really, you can see the step up and development from Lamar Jackson from this year to last year. Yeah, and for, that, that listen, not obviously Lamar gets a lot, like he put in the work, but they deserve credit for, for ask that. Ask yourself this. We all want, you know, I, I hear these stories. Lamar, this is terrible that he fell in the first round. 
You know who else fell in the first round? Aaron Rodgers, but he ended up with Green Bay. Right. Big Ben, Tom Brady, Russell Wilson. When you don't go top four, you generally go to a better owner, a better staff. Look at all these legends in the game. I mean, not like Peyton Manning was lucky. He goes to Indy and he gets a Hall of Fame general manager and he gets Tony Dungy. Right. Okay. Most of these top four guys, you go to bad owners, bad staffs, and 3-13 and 13 rosters. Yeah, that's how they got to the top of the job. Finally, speaking of all of those things you just mentioned, Knicks coach David Fizdale is in the second year of a four-year contract, but it's looking like he won't be finishing that deal. Embarrassing. According to Adrian Wojnarowski, the Knicks front office has started laying the groundwork to fire Fizdale. Ugh. Team president Steve Mills has reportedly worked to convince owner James Dolan that the current roster is good enough to compete, but just isn't being coached Come out. well enough. Who said that? Uh, the, the president of the team. Thinks this Steve is Mills. good enough to compete against Milwaukee and Boston and Toronto? Uh, we're going to have Michael Rappaport on a little bit later, who I'm sure will have plenty to say about this. Um, this is a disaster, but it's not David Fitzdale's fault. No, time out. The East is weaker than the West. Yes. In the West, this is a 27-win team, max. They may win 31 in the East. They, 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 go look at Boston's roster. You get to about nine guys, and you're like, then there's a guy you're not sure can play. They, they, they got two guys that can play. It's it's nonsense to assume that this is David Fizdale's fault. First of all, you can only win with the talent that you have, and especially in the NBA. I mean, we Cleveland is no better example of that. You're in you're in the NBA Finals, and then you can't make the playoffs. Like, you you can only win with the talent that you have. It doesn't matter how great of a coach you are. And when you're in a dysfunctional organization like the New York Knicks, like let's just say it. Like we all know what the issue here. James it's, Dolan. It's James Dolan. It's it doesn't owner. matter who you put into that spot. It doesn't matter who the coach is. It doesn't matter who the president is or the general manager. Yeah, this Lord. is what you're going to have every single time. By the way. Because this is the environment he's created. The only way to fix the New York Knicks would be to just completely start over in every facet. Like, David Fizdale is not the issue here. He's yeah. very well respected around the NBA. Players love him. It's not David Fizdale's fault that he has no control over the roster. By the way, Kevin Durant didn't chose the Knicks, right? And what did he say? The Knicks aren't cool. It wasn't about David Fisdale. Their brand now is just an overrated, diluted, messy brand. It's a shame. It really is. Because really, New York basketball fans are crazy good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just, there's, there's nothing else to say. It's just a shame. Yeah. A joy with the news. Well, that's the news. And